Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the water line for the dispenser on your side-by-side -side refrigerator. That's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we will be working near some electrical circuits. So the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to your refrigerator. So you either pull it far enough forward that you can unplug it, or locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker, or remove the appropriate fuse. Now you may also wish to disconnect the inlet water supply or at least turn it off and that may require pulling the refrigerator forward as well. And once we've done that, we're going to remove the escutcheon on the dispenser assembly to access that water line. Now to remove this escutcheon, we're going to begin by taking the drip tray out. So grasp the front edge of that and just pull it towards you. And we'll set that aside. And that will expose three screws at the very bottom. Next, remove those. Now there's one tuck just behind that handle, so use caution when removing that that we don't scratch the door handle. And next, we'll lift up on that scutcheon. That will release three tabs across the top. We can just rotate that around. And you'll see a wire harness connector. I'm going to grasp that connector right at that display board and disconnect it. We'll set the escutcheon aside. Now next we'll remove this dispenser assembly. It's held in place with three Phillips screws. We'll just remove those. Just pull that far enough forward so we can access the wire harness connector on the back side of that end of the control board. Press the locking tab and disconnect the harness. Now you may need a pair of needle nose pliers to just grasp the top edge of that water supply tube. We'll see where it curls from inside of the door liner down into the outlet spout. Now with that assembly tilted forward, we'll take a pair of needle nose pliers and we're just going to pull that water line up out of that spout and then we can take that assembly and set it aside. Now at the same time, we we'll want to block this opening into the freezer to prevent excess room air getting into that area. So just find a nice clean rag and push it up into that opening. Now next we'll go down to the kick plate area and we'll disconnect that water line at the bottom. Now next we'll remove that kick plate at the bottom. So using a stiff putty knife, I'm just going to go along that top edge and you'll find some plastic tabs. So while prying out, we'll just put enough pressure on those tabs to release them. Pull the kick paint away from the front of the refrigerator, set it aside, and then we're going to disconnect that supply line at this union. Now to disconnect it, we're going to push on that little collar, push it towards the center of that union, and that will release the grip on that water line, and just pull the water line out. Now typically there will be some water in this area, so you may want something to Soft that up. And now we can close that freezer door back up and we'll pull the old water line out. So just grasp that water line and pull that up through that opening. Now you may need a little bit of resistance at one point, so take your needle nose pliers, just grasp that tubing and gently pry up on it. And pull the old one completely out and we'll discard that and we'll take our new water line 
If you wish, you can put a little protective tape on the end of that, as long as you don't put too much on there. And that'll protect that edge. It's not entirely necessary to do that. You could feed that through the way it is and then cut off about a quarter inch of it after it gets through. But if you have a piece of tape on there firmly, you should be able to fish that all the way down through that opening. So we'll start at the top. And just carefully push that tubing down using caution that we don't cause it to kink. Once you have about this much left, you should start looking for it to come out through the bottom edge below the hinge on that freezer door. Just continue to push that through. And once you see it coming out of the bottom hinge, you'll need to grasp that end of it so that we don't kink it. And then while pulling on the bottom, we'll continue to push from the top. And leave yourself about six inches of that tubing protruding from the top. And then we'll go to the bottom and reconnect that to the coupler. So we'll just peel off that protective tape. And if there's any residue on there, we'll need to remove that. The important thing is that we have a nice square, clean cut on the end of that tubing with no scarring along the side. We'll next connect that to the coupler. We're simply going to push that tubing in until it bottoms out. And just pull back on it and that will lock it in place. We can then put our kick plate back on. So line up the ends of that kick plate with the hinges. Make sure we capture that water line. And then we'll engage the bottom clips of that kick plate into that opening in the base of the refrigerator. Then depress the top ones and push it into place. And now we'll go back to the dispenser. Now when reinstalling the dispenser, we need to make sure that that water line fits down into that spout area. And it should end up being just flush with the very bottom. Now it's very difficult to push that into place and then set the whole assembly back in. You can attempt that, but chances are you'll find that you won't be able to guarantee that it stays into place. So what we suggest is that we remove this control board and that will allow us to get in behind here and fit that water line in. So to remove that board, we'll start by taking the three screws out across the top. Now these are a small Phillips screw, so probably a number one Phillips screwdriver to remove those. And the protective film. And then three screws across the bottom. We want to use caution working near the circuit board. Make sure that you've grounded yourself to prevent any static electricity and try not to touch any of the terminals while working near it. And then we can tilt that board carefully up through the opening and that will allow us to guide that water line into the spout. So our next step will be to remove that rag that we had pushed into the ice chute opening. We'll take that tubing and try to guide it down into the spout area. And we'll lift the dispenser up into position.
and we'll hold it in place. We'll install those three retaining screws. And now we can line up that water line, press it firmly down, and then we'll inspect it from the bottom to make sure that it comes flush with the edge of that uh, spout. Now if need be, you can carefully use a pair of needle nose pliers without squeezing too hard on that tubing. Just gently push down on it. And once we've ensured that it's flush, make sure that we have no kinks, and then we'll tilt this board back up into place. So now we'll lift that board up, make sure to tuck the wires in behind, and at the same time, we'll reconnect this wire harness on the left-hand side, press it firmly on so that the locking tab engages, And then we'll begin by putting the three screws on across the bottom. Now make sure that control board is laying flush against the plastic housing and don't use the screws to pull it into place. Now next we'll lay that shield over the board. And then install the top three screws. Now we're ready to install the escutcheon. Now to reinstall that escutcheon, you'll note that where the connector fits in, there is a little split in that circuit board. And also on the connector, there is a little keyway on one side of that connector. That'll help us identify how that fits into that connection. So simply press it firmly onto that board and then we'll rotate that escutcheon around and line up these three tabs across the top with the three rectangular holes in the outer door panel. Tuck it in behind the handle. Press the top fit firmly against the outer door panel and press down. And that should line up the three screws across the bottom. And again, use caution with that one in behind the handle. You may wish to put a little piece of painter's tape to protect that as you're tightening it. We'll then reinstall the grill. Make sure it lays flush on the bottom and snap it into place. We're now ready to turn the water supply back on, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.